Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to be discussing how it's possible for a tire to perform well in all four seasons. How does something that has the Three Peak Mountain Snowflake, which is a certification of winter performance, also have wear characteristics that hold up to hot summer temperatures, all while stacking up against today's best all season tires? First off, I think there's some important backstory. I was looking for a tire for my Crosstrek that I could genuinely leave on for all four seasons. Why? Because I'm lazy. So in my research, the best tire I could find was the Michelin Cross Climate Plus, an all-season tire certified for winter conditions. So that's what I bought. Yes, with my own money. And did you really buy new tires if you didn't post about it on social media? So I posted on Instagram that I'd be testing them out over the next 12 months to see if I could drive on them year-round. Well, Michelin saw this post, and as it turns out, they had already been working on another version of this tire, the Cross Climate 2, and they asked me if I'd be interested in trying it out early. I was already impressed by the Cross Climate Plus, that's why I bought it, so here we are, and now I've put thousands of miles on them across multiple road trips in varying conditions. So overall, what's the strategy? On one hand, you can have a winter tire. It's great in deep snow and ice compared to other tires, but not as great at dry or wet braking in higher temperatures, nor great for dry handling. On the other hand, you can have a summer tire, excellent performance in dry and usually wet as well, great handling when the temperatures are nice, but you definitely don't want to drive on these in snowy or icy conditions, or even really cold temperatures depending on the tire. In the middle, you have all season tires. All seasons are generally very good at tire wear, and for many regions, they provide good year round traction. Not as much as a dedicated summer tire in the right conditions, nor a dedicated winter tire in snowy conditions, but they're a decent compromise on traction while offering a long tread life, thus being nice for the consumer in that they don't have to buy new tires frequently. For areas of the country that never see snow or have well-managed plowing, you can get away with it. But this tire is a bit different. The approach is different. So how do you make an all-season tire with its long wear characteristics and summer performance, but also certified with a three-peak mountain snowflake? Well, Michelin looked at their data on compounds and their data on tread patterns. For compounds, as you reduce a compound's glass transition temperature, in other words, the temperature at which a compound is too cold and thus gets very hard, like glass, as you reduce that temperature, the tire performs better in snowy conditions. It's cold the tire needs to be pliable to work well in the cold. Unfortunately, as you reduce that glass transition temperature, your dry traction goes down. The tire's too soft at higher temperatures, and that leads to excessive wear. So our starting point in this scenario for this tire is a compound similar to a dedicated winter tire to improve snow traction. So how does it work in the summer? Here's where we get into tread patterns, and as you can see, it has a very distinct tread pattern. As far as tread patterns go, the more cuts or sipes and grooves and features you have, the more biting edges the tire has, and this helps in the snow. But in dry conditions, you simply want to maximize the amount of rubber on the road, and you want fewer sipes, because these cause more wear. And ultimately, you'll notice this tread pattern isn't covered in sipes. It has grooves and patterns which we'll discuss, but it doesn't have all the sipes you're used to seeing in a winter tire. So, very big picture, what we have here is a tire that uses a compound that's similar to a winter compound, but it uses a tread pattern that's more similar to a summer tread pattern, in that it has very few sipes and cuts, which puts the tire in a very unique position. The ability to be a certified three-peak mountain snowflake tire, and thanks to the tread pattern, significantly less wear than a traditional winter tire when it's driven on in the summer months. So how does the tire perform when it's wet? Well, you can tell simply looking at the tread design how this scenario was accounted for, as the directional tire forces the entering water away from the center of the tire and out the sides. Another aspect is that the tire has a round, rather than square, contact patch. Now, if you want a tire to wear evenly, the easiest thing to do is use a square contact patch. The problem is, this hurts you on wet traction. So this tire has a round contact patch, meaning more contact at the center and less at the sides, which forces any water out and around the tire rather than under it, reducing the likelihood of hydroplaning. And if you appropriately manage the stresses on the tire, you can manage even wear, while having a rounded contact patch to maximize wet grip. But you might wonder, why not use full grooves down the tire? 
Well, that leads us to snow performance. The problem with big channels going down the whole tire is that these longitudinal grooves do nothing for you in snow traction. That's just a space snow passes through with little impact on grip. If you have four 10 mm longitudinal grooves, now you're giving up 40 mm of your tread width that you can't use to dig into the snow. So this tire utilizes the entire width. You can kind of think of it like paddles scooping up the snow, or from the side like a gear digging into the snow. There's always something to resist against rather than an open channel to help provide traction. Now again, the compound is also critically important as well to snow grip, but this is a way to improve the grip using the tread pattern. And visually looking at it, you might wonder about tire noise. Tire noise comes from several sources. You have the tread blocks physically hitting the ground, you have air pumping between the grooves, and some portions are outside of the tire's control. It comes down to how the tire vibrations pass through the actual vehicle you're driving, and thus create cabin noise. Now, something you want in a snow tire is to have open shoulders, like you see here. Again, these open shoulders act similarly to a gear, digging into the snow or mud or whatever it is, but open shoulders hurt you on noise. You'll find the quietest tires that don't have open shoulders won't have ideal traction in the snow. So this is a section where snow traction has been optimized. One of the reasons this tire is actually directional is to help manage that noise, by directionally controlling how the air flows through the pattern and minimizing the noise as much as possible. Plus, having a rounded contact patch rather than square maximizes contact in the center, which also optimizes noise by reducing the dependency on the open shoulders. Now, speaking of that rounded contact patch, you may observe in addition to not having any longitudinal grooves, you don't have a wide central rib going down the tire. And without that central rib, you might wonder how they handle on center steering feel. And again, this goes back to the rounded contact patch. If they didn't use the rounded contact patch, this tread design wouldn't have good on center feel because those central ribs can be helpful. However, by rounding the contact patch, elongating how the tire contacts the ground versus a big rectangle, this lines up the tire so that the tire naturally wants to center, thus improving on center feel. Okay, so what's the difference between the Cross Climate Plus and the Cross Climate 2? Ultimately, they're very similar tires with very similar goals, but have small regional differences. The Cross Climate Plus was European designed and originally built for the European market. The Cross Climate 2 is built in North America, in both the US and Canada, for the North American market. There's a bit more emphasis on improving tread wear, with more miles driven and longer distances, so this has a 60,000 mile warranty, in part thanks to a bit more tread depth, versus 50,000 miles for the Cross Climate Plus. And the European tire also has a greater focus on rolling resistance, as fuel prices are higher, so that's a larger concern there. Traction between the two is very similar. Now, looking at the tire, one might wonder why does it have a B rating for the wet traction grade? As it turns out, the UTQG wet traction grade test involves a locked tire sliding on a damp surface. So this test, which is an old test, is measuring a locked wheel. Well, today we have ABS, which keeps the tire close to peak friction and prevents it from locking up. So you really don't have a locked wheel scenario occur when you panic brake anymore. So the test is looking at locked wheel, but the tire is designed for peak stopping distance when using ABS, which the majority of cars nowadays have. Michelin says there is not a direct correlation between a tire that stops well when locked and a tire's peak level of grip, which will always occur before completely locking up. A winter tire is a good example of where this gets backwards. A winter tire has good grip, but once it's sliding, it's not as stiff as a summer tire, so it's going to shear off the compound. To me, it seems at the very least we should have a test that demonstrates peak grip rather than sliding grip for wet traction. Michelin's own testing, as well as third-party testing, shows that this tire breaks wonderfully in the wet. Now, one more comment on the design of the tire. Something that's interesting about the tire industry is that it's not uncommon to have features that are present on the tire when it's new, but these tread features fade away as you work through the useful tread depth. The problem is that this means your tire's performance degrades even faster as you lose these tread features. So this tire has full depth tread features. So why wouldn't everyone use full depth features? 
First, most tire tests are done when tires are new, so for comparison purposes, you'll rarely see companies claim performance benefits of their tires when they're worn. Second, full tread depth features are expensive. The tooling is much more complicated and has to be replaced more often when you have long, thin features with high depths, meaning the tooling stresses are going to be greater. So it's expensive to do. And third, some OEs may want tires that have better steering feel. One way of improving steering feel is to remove sipes and cuts in the tires or use very shallow sipes because these sipes reduce the rigidity of the tread pattern. You can get around this by using zigzagged locking sipes, like what's going on inside of these tread blocks, and by using even thinner cuts. The very thin cuts, or long cuts like you see here, but with large continuous tread blocks which help reduce tire squirm, again, go back to being expensive to make, because the tooling stresses are greater if the metal is thinner or longer, and thus has to be replaced more often. Alright, naturally you might wonder, how do we know this is a good tire? I think in addition to me explaining the engineering behind the tire, it's also instructive to look at the actual results from third party testing. That's exactly what I did before I bought this tire. I was looking for a performance all season tire with a three peak mountain snowflake and this one topped the charts. They tested equally or better than the all season tires I was previously running when it came to wet or dry braking and handling all while providing massive improvements over my previous all seasons in snowy conditions. I was genuinely impressed to find a tire with so few compromises and I'd encourage you to check out third party test data like consumer reports to see where it falls against the competition. Personally, I've put over a thousand miles on the Cross Climate Plus and about 8,000 miles on the Cross Climate 2, driving through all kinds of various conditions on several road trips and it has been fantastic. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh -oh.